Podcast. Okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Belton, your fearless leader. Welcome to another Fearless Leader Podcast. Um, today, I have Dr. Corliss Thomas on. Uh, we, we had a short stint in the past, but we have Dr. Corliss Thomas back. And um, she is the Senior Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at Rutgers Newark. How are you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Mr. Oh, uh, No problem. No problem. Great to see you again. Uh, Doc, you want to tell the audience, uh, the listeners, a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So I'm the Senior Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at Rutgers University in Newark. Uh, and in that role, I'm responsible for student co-curricular experience. And so that means all the things that the students are doing outside of the classroom. Um, I'm responsible for student life and leadership, for athletics, uh, for health and wellness, for dining, for residence life, for career development, um, areas like that, that students interact with on a daily basis. I, I, I know before <clears throat> I picked your brain a little bit about uh, leadership uh, and, and how you guys are, uh, are building leaders uh, through uh, Rutgers, um, almost like, you know, like one student at a time. Can you explain that to me? Like, what, what are you guys doing with, with the leadership piece? For the sure. Students. So we have a robust program for our students that really focuses on what it means to be a leader. Um, and for many students, that starts with their campus involvement. As we know, students come to a college or university, they take their um, 15, 18 credits, to anywhere from 12 to 18 credits. And what is the rest of the college experience made up of? And for many students, that's made up of involvement. We know from higher education research that students who are involved in the life of the campus um, are more successful students. Mm -hmm. And so we try to make sure that we've designed a program, an outside of classroom program that allows students to lead as a result of um, involvement in student organizations um, as peer leaders, because we know students listen to students, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we have a number of peer leadership programs on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, students have the opportunity to do leaders uh, to uh, do internships. Students have the opportunity to get involved with volunteer programs and community engagement programs. There are a number of opportunities that students have, and so depending on what their interest and their mm -hmm. talent is, students will decide. Okay, I want to start here um, to explore my role as a leader in society, um, and they pick something up and take it from there. We have a number of levels of leaders as well. So we have our new leaders. Um, maybe you are interested in um, orientation um, and making sure that students feel comfortable at um, Rutgers University in Oregon. So you start as an orientation leader um, and we train you to be a, a leader of new students. Mm -hmm. um, that is a job that our students do on campus. And then after that, you say, I enjoyed that. I wanna to move to level two. And so you'd move into another type of leadership program or opportunity that we have on campus. And it really is um, designed by the student, crafted by the student and really um, is um, centered on what their talent is um, and how far they'd like to go in leadership education at the university. I, I appreciate that. I, I, I love that. <clears throat> Always a, an advocate for uh, making sure that I, I, um, especially our, my um, black and brown students are uh, uh, in those sort of um, situations. I, I want them out in front early. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate that you guys even have designed programming around that to put students in spaces like that. Because I think sometimes I know in college, I sort of got caught in spaces where I wanted to do things, but there I didn't feel like um, there were those outlets that sort of would groom me to be uh, to to put me in those um, spaces. I even like hearing that Rutgers Newark, you know, you guys are offering the the mentorships and things like that. So um, uh, that that's excellent. That's excellent, uh, Doc. So you spoke about you went on about the leadership before, and I had also wanted to ask you about we spoke about diversity and inclusion. All right. So I know that was one of the big pieces also um, that uh, that Rutgers is, is definitely Rutgers North is definitely uh, proud to be a, uh, one of the leaders in in, um, in education. On sure. So can you touch on 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 uh, uh, diversity and inclusion for me? Absolutely. So we are one of the most diverse campuses in the country. Um, we are very proud of that. Um, and what that means for us is that our students are 
Um, so it's our belief that being in a diverse environment mm -hmm. enriches your education. Mm -hmm. It's not just about being diverse in a space. Mm -hmm. so what does that diversity do for you? Okay, it puts you into groups um, where you're working with people that are different from you um, and you learn from that. Mm -hmm. It puts you into academic situations where you're in uh, intellectual exchange with people that are different from you and you learn from that. Um, it is um, an opportunity really for our students to be among the most educated in the country because they are learning in a group um, that is very diverse. And so mm -hmm. yes, you're learning content, but you're also learning people mm -hmm. um, and what that means. Um, we have a number of programs at the university that are around diversity and educate, uh, diversity, equity, and, in, and inclusion. Um, and um, it's really about us recognizing the identity that the student brings to the table. Our students come to us and, you know, I, I walk in the room and I am an African-American woman. Mm -hmm. What else am I? Mm -hmm. What else um, is encompassed in my right. identity? You know, and so we really want to make sure that we recognize mm -hmm. um, all of the um, parts of our students' identity and that we make sure that they feel validated and recognized in every, in every, um, um, in every facet of who they are. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you have, um, what is the, the, the philosophy for um, bringing in these, the students in the surrounding community um because you guys sit in a, in a heart of Newark always thought it was like uh like a great location I mean from any direction buses trains and everything else so you guys sit in in a good space and always been a lot of growth happening so how do you guys um and with that diversity uh because you you're going to wind up seeing somebody from probably your culture your community sure. on Rutgers in Rutgers Newark so but how do you bring in that surrounding community um, um, into the school? Is there like a concerted plan to bring those stu students in? Sure, sure. So one of the things that you'll hear about Records Newark is that we are in Newark and of Newark. Mm -hmm. And that is um, a, a phrase that we take to heart. Mm -hmm. um, and Newark for us includes the city of Newark and greater Newark. So right, our right. towns are right around us as well. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that we talked about last time was kind of finding finding Rutgers Newark, not really even knowing that that jewel right. was sitting there right in there. the neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? Um, I certainly didn't know it. And I've lived, you know, for many, many years mm -hmm. um, before working at the university. I didn't know that that mm -hmm. kind of jewel was sitting there. Right. And so, yes, there's a concerted effort. Um, my colleagues in admissions, and I know you're, you're planning on having a conversation mm -hmm. with them too. Mm -hmm. They um, make a... Um, First of all, there's uh, relationships that we are looking to develop and have developed um, strong relationships with the school systems around the area. Um, uh, the relationship with the City of Newark um, Board of Education, the school system is very, very strong. Um, our population is at this point 17, 18% at least um, Newark and surrounding area. And we're looking Great. to grow that every mm -hmm. single um, because we believe that our responsibility is to not just sit someplace, you know, colleges and mm -hmm. universities sit in locations mm -hmm. and sometimes they sit in locations and they don't feed the location. They don't use their resources to support the location. We feel like it's our responsibility to feed the city of Newark to be inter in, in, in relationship with the city of Newark um, and the surrounding area because we have a lot to offer and we want to make sure that our students from the area are benefiting from all that we have to offer. So yes, there is a concerted effort in admissions um, and enrollment services to ensure that our students, our local students, are getting the advantage of a Rutgers education. That's excellent. Um, first, I'm going to let you know that I'm still in the phrase feet in the city. Um, and I, you'll see it on a T-shirt. You'll be walking by some student <laughs> and it'll be <laughs> I'm not going to let you know I took it. <laughs> but, That's OK. When, Go for when it. it's going to happen. But I love that feet in the city. I love it. Doc. Um, and so, you know, what it almost like sort of swings into this next question when talk about feet in the city. And I know that 
during the pandemic, a lot of people have had to uh, do a lot of things for the community. So as far as the pandemic uh, is concerned, what, what shifts had to happen on campus? Sure, sure. So that's, we are experiencing one of the, uh, certainly a time unlike any I have ever, and mm -hmm. I've been in higher education a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's been super challenging for everyone, for our students especially, um, for our faculty, for our staff. Um, we had to pivot to online, um, to remote education. Mm -hmm. um, right away um so it's been a year coming up in a mm -hmm. in another week it's been yeah. a year mm -hmm. um since we've been remote um and um at the same time we have a campus population about 2,000 students a little less that live on campus um and we moved those students off campus we had to um close our residence halls mm -hmm. and we are open now just to a fraction of those students um uh, that have uh, that are experiencing food um, ho uh, housing insecurity. Mm -hmm. And so we kept our doors open to support mm -hmm. those students, absolutely. Um, but most of our students went home um, and are doing their education from at home. We had to move our full scale dining services um, to a much smaller um, venue. Mm -hmm. um, we had to um, um, start practicing social distancing on campus and um, mask wearing on campus and advocating for that. And we actually put a student group together who um, their name is the Responsible Raiders and their responsibility is to get out on campus and make sure that folks are wearing their masks and are social distanced um, in the way that is appropriate so that we remain healthy as a community. Um, and those is just an example of some of the things um, that we had to do um, in order to make sure that our students um, continue to be served. The other important thing that we did, mm -hmm. we moved services in my area, student affairs, we moved them to remote. So you can still have your counseling appointment, it's remote. You can still see a doctor, it's remote. Mm -hmm. You can still have an appointment with the Career Development Center, it's remote. You can still work out. A lot of our students work out. And mm -hmm. so we moved a lot of our fitness classes online. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our leadership education classes online. Um, it's been challenging because, mm -hmm. you know, we're used to being face to face mm -hmm. and the energy and the interaction of that is there's no, there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. um, but we couldn't, we couldn't not provide our students with um, health wellness, um, all, um, you know, fitness, um, psychological appointments, career appointments, all the things that they need and are used to, we still um, were able to provide them. So that's an example. Those are some examples. I, I like the idea, Doc, um, of, of a parent hearing all that you've said thus far. Mm -hmm. um, I, I liked the, the idea, um, and that was um, one of the uh, rationales for me to have uh, universities, especially local universities on, because I, when last time you and I spoke, we talked about how, the, you know, these hidden gems, and especially uh, Rutgers being at the, at the, you know, at the seat, sitting at the, the, the center of, of Newark, and, um, and, and students riding by and not know it. Um, I didn't hear about it until a, a friend of mine in the community told me about it, you know, and I think you guys must have had like some sort of baseball game or something and didn't even know for years the field was there and then, you know, took advantage and I came down and, and wound up registering myself. So yeah. I, I, and then I do appreciate <clears throat> even the continued effort that you guys are doing uh, with even having students go out into, you know, making sure that you know, people are practicing um, social distancing on campus and things like that. And that goes back to what you were talking about earlier about creating those those leaders. So I, I know if it, you know, um, as a parent and educator, I definitely appreciate that. And that's actually what I, I want parents to know about, um, about the way that um, universities, our local universities are moving. So I applaud you guys for that. Doc, and so you, you know, you tapped on it a little bit, but can you go a little bit more into uh, the health and wellness um, initiatives that you guys have? And I, I heard you talk about, you know, the, the doctor's appointments and things like that, but can you just, um, like, if I'm a, um, <laughs> I always look at it like, if I'm a, if my, if my daughter is coming to the campus, like, 
what health, what health and wellness um, issues or concerns um, or initiatives are you guys, do you guys deal with or have? Sure, sure. So I'm a strong believer in um, the idea that students who are not well um, cannot learn. Hmm. Um, and so uh, we uh, really have built out over the last several years the health and wellness opportunities and services mm -hmm. um, that we have for students. Mm -hmm. So we have a full service health center on campus and a pharmacy. And those two services allow students to come in. You can get your physical. If you're sick, you can come in and see a doctor um, or a nurse. You can get your medication right Doc, on campus. You Doc, you guys have a, you have a pharmacy on campus? We have a pharmacy on campus. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I think a part of it, it started because students were like, well, here I am on campus. I got my prescription from the doctor. Well, Is I it, got it. Yeah. The, you know, what's the... <laughs> and right, so, exactly. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have a pharmacy on campus. Um in addition, and, and so now in the pandemic, our students um, can certainly, we've moved to telehealth, telemedicine. And so mm -hmm. if you need to see a doctor and you're not on campus, you can just like with any of our, you know, certainly I can see uh, a doctor in terms of telemedicine. Our students can also see a doctor in terms of telemedicine. Right. right. Um, uh, but if you need to come on campus, our health center also has remained open for in-person appointments because there are some things that you can't do via telemedicine. Um, additionally, um, we have a full, a full service counseling center um, where our students have the opportunity to talk with professionals to deal with um, alcohol and drug related issues um, with um, uh, mental health issues generally um, with issues that have to do with women's health, mm -hmm. um, um, health issues around gender identity. Uh, we have a full service counseling center um, that is available to students right now. We are doing all of our counseling appointments via um, tele, tele, uh, telehealth, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. And so you're able to see your, we didn't skip a beat in terms of if you have a regular appointment with your counselor, you can have that appointment next week and we will do it via video. Um, we also have a pantry on campus, a food pantry. Mm. Um, and we see lots of students, unfortunately, like many campuses around the country, we mm -hmm. have students who are experiencing food insecurity. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to join together with our community partners, um, the uh, food uh, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, mm -hmm. the Greater right. Newark Conservancy, um, many of uh, local vendors um, who are, just want to make sure that our students have good food. And so we join together with them and we have a food pantry on campus. We have students who wow. have disabilities. We have disability services on campus through health and wellness. I mean, there are, there are um, we have students who are victims of interpersonal violence. We have a staff that works with students to make, to, to um, help them pr to provide confidential resources and counseling around interpersonal violence and um, to connect them with community resources around interpersonal violence, to be there as a listening ear, because um, sometimes students are in crisis mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. around interpersonal violence. And so we provide that as a resource as well. We try to be as comprehensive as possible mm -hmm. in terms of the many issues that students could experience when it comes to their health and wellness. Doc, what happens with <clears throat> so, you know, we realize the students are on campus and things like that. Uh, you, you, you just ran off a, a bunch of services that a, a student will be able to take advantage of and their families, which is always good for me when I think about institutions um, of higher learning. I'm always wondering about not I, I just don't always look at the student. I'm looking at the student and the family because, you know, um, like you said, if a student isn't well, I don't know how the student is doing too much learning. So. Um, that's another T-shirt that I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'll, one of your quotes <laughs> I'll, I'll put down someplace to remember. But, uh, Doc, so those students, like if they come onto campus and things like that, um, and those students who are struggling academically at this time, um, so tutorial services and, and things like that, uh, uh, touch upon those things as well. 
Sure. So there are uh, tutorial services that are available to our students. So every student uh, that comes to the university gets an academic advisor. And that academic advisor is the person, is kind of the go-to um, mm -hmm. if the student is having a problem. Um, and the academic advisor can, first of all, make sure that your course load is appropriate, can check in with you around how you're doing in specific classes, can refer you to support services, whether it's for writing, whether it's for mathematics, whether it's for subject-centered tutoring. Um, so the academic advisor is kind of a key person to kind of keep track of that student in terms of that uh, experience. We also have another resource on campus that has turned out to be probably one of the most valuable um, resources um, because, um, because often what we find is that a student will come in and we'll find out from a faculty member maybe, student isn't doing very well, student mm -hmm. hasn't showed up to class, student is getting an F, um, not sure what's going on, student isn't performing in the way that he, she, they did at the start of the semester, I'm a little concerned. Can you check in with the students? So a team on campus that we call the care team. Um, the professor can send that concern to the care team and the care team will reach out to the student and say, what's going on? Um, is there something that's happening with you that we need to know about? And from that, we find out all the other things potentially that are impacting the student's performance in the classroom. My mom is sick. I lost my job. I'm not feeling well. Um, I've been involved in an accident or a crime. Um, you know, whatever that thing is that's throwing the student off track academically often comes out as a result of that interaction um, with the care team. And then we're able to apply resources from various, you know, depending on whatever the issue is, to try to help the student through that experience and help them to return their attention to their classwork. Um, it has turned out to be just a, an incredible resource um, that we created here on campus about six years ago. And over that time, we've just been able to really more specifically help students who are in crisis. Um, and a lot of times that crisis comes out in the classroom. Mm -hmm. In the class, that's where we find it. I, I, um, I, I'm so glad that um, <laughs> I, I feel like um, I've, I've been jotting down my notes. So you know, the care team is another one of mine now, yeah. Doc. I just want to let you know. You should. <laughs> I'm gonna just have to review this this meeting and then just start all over from the top. <laughs> she said that too. She said that too. That's excellent, Doc. I um. I really want it because I know that I'm going to put this out and I want students and I want parents and the like to see this uh, because it's, it, it needs to be, um, we need forums where folks understand uh, what's going on um, in schools because um, it's just bigger than the grade. Um, you just you just put some things to care team. That's, that's just crazy. And that's just in, in a space where a, um, a parent guardian should feel safe with that part of the understanding, right? That might not be like the first thing that folks see when they're introduced to a university. And a lot of the times, you know, the kids aren't coming home like they got a care team, mom, you know? So they, that's not happening. But for a parent to understand what a care team is and, and especially being on a university, when I just, I'm sending my baby who I've been working with, for who I've just raised, and now you are in charge of my baby. And, but you also got these other support services to wrap around my kid. I, right. That's that's excellent, Doc. That is, Doc. What else did what what am I missing if I'm one if I'm a student coming in? So we talked about health and wellness. We talked about leadership and some other things. What are those? What are one or two other key points that you would be like um, parents or folks would need to know about those about services or anything like that? That um, if you sent your son or daughter here, they would be a part of these services or um, programs or or anything. Sure, sure. Um, the one thing we didn't talk about was career. Okay. And, you know, so I do uh, orientation. I've, I welcome all of our new students every year. And um, pre-COVID, I'd be in a room with, you know, a few hundred mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. several orientations. And I say to them, 
So who at the end of this experience is hoping to get a job? 200 hands go mm-hmm. into the air, right? Mm-hmm. Because students are thinking, yeah, you know, um, our students aren't just looking for a job. They're looking for a career. Mm-hmm. Um, I came to get this degree to put me on the path mm-hmm. um, to change my life. Um, right. And so our career development center is, is introduced to the students on day one from the very beginning. Um, and they are encouraged to start to prepare themselves right from the start. Do you have a resume? What does that look like? What kinds of experiences um, have you had? And how do we write those res- those experiences on your resume so that employers um, have an idea of the talent that you have and that you're bringing to the table? And if you don't have those experiences, how do you get those experiences mm-hmm. through leadership programs, other things that we're doing on campus so that you then um, have a strong resume to present to employers. And so um, career right from the start um, is presented to students as a place that you need to start just, you know, we're not, we're not bombarding them with career information on day one, because we want them to kind of Take a deep breath, you know, Mm -hmm. recognize you've got a clean slate here and you have an opportunity to kind of build uh, and grow and develop into the person that you want to be. But recognize that all of those growth experiences um, uh, in the aggregate, you know, in in total, um, are you putting together um, in a way that you then get to present to an employer. And so we try to help students on their presentation. You know, mm-hmm. we try to help students to um, build towards that first internship, you know, and then after the first internship, mm-hmm. second inter- internship, um, how do you talk to an employer? We have career fairs that happen on campus. On campus, How do you present yourself? A lot of students have never spoken to um, anybody in a, in a um, formal interview situation or walked up to an employer from a company and said, hi, you know, I'm interested in working for fill in the blank. How do you do that? You know, what does it take to walk into that situation? Um, and so we try to prepare our students as much as possible for those um, career interactions um, so that they have a firm foundation for their future. Um, that I would say is is one of the things we, the the other thing that we needed to talk about this. Morning. Okay, okay. So, all right. So we we did we go across the gamut of 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 the benefits of a student being on, I'm um, coming or attending Rutgers North. I would say so. I would say so. Um, you know, in total, um, we're looking for the student. So. If, if I had to encapsulate it, I would say that um, this is the student's opportunity to um, develop and grow into the person that they want to be. And the sky's the limit. And so come in mm-hmm. and show us who you are. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want to prescribe who you're going to be. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell me who you want to be. Um, and then we're going to work from there. Doc, you, um, if, if I was one of those students, one of those two, 300 students sitting in that room and you were like, the sky's the limit and how you just talk to me, I'd be like, let's go get them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so amped up. I mean, because you know, you, when you get pulled into those things, you are kind of wondering like, what are they going to say? But the, you know, the, the, the positive words of, you know, encouragement and things like that, that you were saying, I'd be looking from side to side, like we could do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. That's what we right, want. We believe right. in our students. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, we, we really do. I, listen, I, um, I, I, I'm glad I asked that final question because the career piece um, was, is, is so important. Uh, and so I'm sure that if a parent is sending their student to the, to the university, that, 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 that does matter. They need to know that um, what does that student's end game look like. So I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, all of the information uh, that you were able to uh, push out today, and I'll make sure that um, I want to make sure that our students and, and students who cross the country, you know, because um, Rutgers North, um, you guys receive students from all over. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, one of my. Uh, closest friends that I met down there, he was, uh, my, what did he, I think he was from El Salvador. 
And, you know, he had to almost show me where it was in the map because, you know, when he said El Salvador, I'm like, you know, I was I was ready for him to point out something in California. But I was like, OK, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but exactly. I appreciate it, you know, having somebody met, you know, having an opportunity to meet someone from, you know, from, you know, not even from my country down in, um, and, and just, you know, being able to hang out with him and things like that and learn about his culture all while, you know, we were kind of taking this path through, through college, you know, into manhood and things like that. So I thought that was real. That was that was good. Um and I, you guys have um, added on a lot of programming down in uh, down in Rutgers, Newark, and so. And I like the way that you guys have built this um, this arm around the students um, and through via the services. So, uh, kudos to you and and Rutgers, Newark. Again, families, I wanted to make sure that uh, you had a, a better understanding of the offerings of mm -hmm. those gyms that sit directly in our backyard. Um, Rutgers, Newark is in the heart of the city of Newark, so. Um, I'll send this out, Doc. I appreciate you um, um, and all that you do for our students, um, definitely. And so, uh, and thanks for for making the time. You know, we won't we won't tell the world, you know, what time <laughs> I got you up, but I appreciate that, Doc. And um, and I know that I'll be reaching out to your guy. And if you want to come back on, if there's things that you know we need to talk about as we move forward, then then I think that's excellent as well. But I want to say thank you for taking out the time, Doctor Corliss Thomas. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to talk yes, to you again. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am. And I would say, the, I, I also sincerely appreciate you taking the time to talk about um, the gem that's in our backyard mm -hmm. um, because we have so much to offer our students. Um, as you say, our students are international, uh, they come from all over the world, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all over the country, mm -hmm. um, and also from right here. Right. Um, in Newark and Greater Newark, and so we are we are delighted, um, you know, to 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 um, welcome so many students from so many places. I'm so glad that I got to speak to the fearless, <laughs> fearless leader today, um, and I look forward to being able to talk to you again, Mr. Belton. I appreciate you, Doc. Thank you, uh, fearless leader people um, out, and you guys take care. Thank you, Doc. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Fearless Leader Podcast, a podcast made to help you take control of your life and find your passion. If you enjoy tonight's podcast, make sure you subscribe so you're notified whenever a new episode is posted and rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. We really appreciate your support here at the Fearless Leader Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you all next week.